left me by now heading south to Dihani where we spent a few days camping and watching some lizards doing it. Then we headed north along the Kenyan coast looking for a small school to do some charity work. We are on our way to the Great Passion Education Center where we will uh, want to hand out the last 20 pads. Um, we spoke to a guy, he says he's the director of the school, his name is Mr. Randu Katama. Um, it sounds like a perfect place to, to, to donate the pad. Um, Louis, do you want to say something? Yeah, it's a small school, we've been looking for a small school mm -hmm. so that um, we can give to each girl at the place. Yeah. Um, we don't know much about the school but we're going to have a look and hopefully we can do some good deeds yeah. for the day. It sounds like it's orphans. It's, it's previously they are disadvantaged kids, kids um, and orphans. Um, they also have a food program there for the kids. Um, so it sounds like the perfect spot, to, not really the perfect spot, but the, the place where the, the pads would be highly appreciated and put to good use. Um, there's water here, so yeah, I think we're going to have a look and hopefully um, we will make 20 girls happy. The school we found was quite poor, with very little facilities. Okay. So we're back from handing out the reusable sanitary pads. Um, so Karin, what was your um, experience of handing out the pads? Language barrier was a bit of a problem. Um, this is a basically an orphanage. School orphanage, huh? Children. Yes. Um, they were. I'm a bit disappointed because the language barrier uh, was a problem. Yeah, much more than we thought because um, people speak English but they really okay, struggle I, to understand our English. Yeah, so I just repeat myself. There were about 50 girls in the class. Um, some of them were way too young to. to to, to start menstruating but then I just gave it to the yeah, older yeah. kids so they were about 20 from the age 12 to 14 that we in the end gave it to and then um, we got the pamphlets so I hope it will make a difference for them they are really poor and yeah, something like this is perfect for them yeah and we hope they will um, start to make it themselves as well it was interesting to see how they had to give away, the younger ones had to give away for the older ones um, and it was again, I think for us, we should do this through a female, not a male. No, the male would have worked better because he, he translated what I oh, said. Oh, okay, the, okay, um, the male would have worked better because yeah, he still understood the, more English. Yeah, it was a bit unorganized, so he appointed the teacher to, to translate and she, she was too shy. Um, yeah, the people here were a lot, a lot more shy to talk about yeah, menstruating, yeah, uh, I yeah, found. Yeah, it's difficult. So the older lady, um, the mama was in the class, she, I think she can't really, she didn't really want to say anything. So I would have preferred that the guy who we okay. met last night yeah. would have translated because when he came in, everything worked. You yeah. know, then he said, any questions, you, you, you. Mm. So, uh, so different culture. Yeah, yeah. Much, much mm. um, less um, willing to talk about it. Mm. Then in Namibia, for example. Eh? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Okay. So, um, just in case you guys forgotten, if you want to support us on Patreon, please go to Patreon, www.patreon.com forward slash fearless on four wheels, and you can there um, support us, get our videos as we post them, not wait, <laughs> and um, you will get exclusive I videos. And get exclusive videos that nobody else sees, and we will send you some Phyllis and Four Wheels merchandise. So we'll see you on the road. Today we are at Gedi Ruins, uh, old Swahili city dating back to the 1700s. So we'll take you on a little bit of a tour. So behind us is the palace of the city of Gedi. Let's go and see what it looks like from above.
Our tour guide was very well informed, but he presented the tour in a style that made us think of a preacher preaching to his congregation. Where in the world are we? we at a cross. Yes. <laughs> in September last year, we were at Cape Cross, Namibia, yeah. just over 4,300 kilometers that way, southwest. And today we are at Cape Cross. Yes. <laughs> no, um, what's his, um, Vasco's Cross. Vasco da Gama's Gama's Cross. cross. He got around a lot. <laughs> yes. In Malindi, Kenya. Mm -hmm. The cross was erected in 1499. Um, Cape Cross, the cross was erected in 1485. He was on his way back from India. India, from Kolkata. Yes, but I got really sick and then they stopped yes. here and burned the ship. <laughs> and there was also. Uh, it was all a, in these three books. Yeah, it was a tough life. Yeah. But now you can see. Oops, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is Wally? Where is it? Where is it? Oh, oh there, 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 there. there. there is Vasco's across yeah. Melindy. Yes. Oh. Our two touristy thing done for the day. Yeah, yeah. So now we're going to go to the beach. Yeah. Today we are at local ocean conservation in Matamu on the Kenyan coast. These guys have released over 8,000 turtles since 1998. Give them more stats. No, that, that, <laughs> that, 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 that is enough. <laughs> um, I'll show you a bit what these guys do now. Let's go in. The One Ocean Conservation Center did a lot of good work in the area, trying to influence the fishermen to stop catching turtles, rescuing injured turtles, and trying to create sustainable income for the local population. They also assisted with the regrowth of the mangroves, as that is the natural habitat of the turtles. Next time on okay, Fearless and Four Wheels, we get stuck now in a very sandy traffic jam and head out to Longwood, a very interesting island. 